Hello, we are in Lesson 5 corresponding to Gauss's Law. After having seen in the introduction the concept of flux, in today's lesson we are going to state Gauss's Law, which tells us that the electric field flux through a closed surface is equal to the net charge enclosed inside it, divided by the electric permittivity in vacuum, epsilon sub zero. As we have already seen, the expression of the flux is the surface integral of the scalar product between the electric field vector and the differential vector of that. Since the integral is to be evaluated on a closed surface, this other symbol is also used. Well, Gauss law tells us that this flux is equal to the enclosed charge divided by sub-zero epsilon. This law is very useful. We use it to calculate the electric field created by charge distributions that present symmetry, whether spherical, cylindrical, or planar. Next, we are going to prove the law. Let's assume a positive point charge Q. And let's calculate the flux produced by its electric field through the closed surface we see on the screen. First, we choose an area differential. And at the central point P, we first evaluate the electric field and then the differential vector of that. The electric field created by a point charge at a distance R, we have seen before, and is q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub zero r squared multiplied by the unit vector u sub r, unit vector in the radial direction. Well, in this expression we see that we have the scalar product between the unit vector u sub r and the differential vector of that. The scalar product is the product of the moduli multiplied by the cosine they form. Since the modulus of the unit vector u sub r is 1, we are left with differential of that times cosine of alpha. To continue with the demonstration, we have to define the concept of solid angle. In the expression we have arrived at previously, we see that the term differential of that by cosine of alpha appears. Differential of that is the area we see here painted in blue. If we multiply it by cosine of alpha, we obtain its projection on the plane perpendicular to the u sub r direction. That is that area painted in red which we are going to call differential of that prime. Well, differential of that prime divided by r squared is what is defined as solid angle differential. The solid angle is a concept similar to the plane angle, but in space. Recall that the elementary plane angle differential of Fi is equal to the quotient between the observed arc differential of L and the radius r. That is, differential of Fi is equal to differential of L divided by R. It is a dimensionless quantity and is measured in radians. The angle under which the entire full circumference is observed is an angle of 2 pi radians. Similarly, we have the solid angle on a sphere. The elementary solid angle is equal to the quotient of the differential observed area of that prime divided by the distance squared. It is still a dimensionless quantity and its unit is the radians. The solid angle under which the whole sphere is observed is 4 pi the radians. And here below you have the demonstration. Well, if in the above expression we replace Differential of that by cosine of alpha divided by r squared, which we have here. We substitute it for the differential of solid angle, we get this expression. Also, as we have seen that the integral over evaluated on a closed surface of differential of fi is equal to 4 pi. We substitute and get the final result, which is equal to q divided by epsilon so zero, just as we wanted to show. Finally, we are going to do a problem applying Gauss's law. We are going to calculate a well-known field, the one created by a positive point charge, and we are going to calculate the field at a point P at a distance R from it. To do this, we will follow the steps shown on the screen. First, we will ask ourselves, how is the structure of the field we are looking for? Then we will choose a Gaussian surface, which has to be an equipotential surface. Then we will calculate the electric field flux through the chosen surface. And finally, we will apply the law to clear the modulus of the electric field we are looking for.
So, let's start with the first step. What does the structure or field lines created by a positive point charge look like? They are radial field lines, since it has spherical symmetry. Next, we have to choose a suitable Gaussian surface, an equipotential surface. Remember that equipotential surfaces are those to which the electric field is perpendicular at all points. In this case, since the electric field is radial, we will choose as equipotential surface a sphere of radius r containing the point P where I want to calculate the field. Then we calculate the electric field flux through the chosen Gaussian surface. We must take into account that on that surface, on that sphere of radius r, the electric field vector and the differential vector of that are parallel, as you can see in the drawing, and therefore the scalar product is the product of the moduli. Therefore, the scalar product becomes the product of moduli. Also, the modulus of the electric field can go outside the integral, since it is constant, because all the points on the sphere are at the same distance from the point source of the point charge. Thus, we are left with the flux being equal to the electric field modulus times the surface area of the sphere, that is e times 4 pi r squared. Finally, we apply Gauss's law which tells us that the flux that we have already calculated and is e times 4 pi r squared is equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon sub zero. From there, we can clear the modulus of e, which gives us q, the well-known expression, q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub zero r squared. If we multiply by the unit vector u sub r, we will give the vector character. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention, and until the next class.